Alright. You can't hear anything? Get better ears. Sorry. <laughs> um, three, two, one, go. Yo! Hey and yo. we're off! The most exciting part of this game is in the first... It's all downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> So you guys want to explain the difference between USA and Japanese? Yeah, yeah sure. so I'll take that one. So the two versions of this game people play are the US version. Um, the Japanese version on this first Samulo or Samulo, um, he takes three hits on the Japanese version, but he takes twice that for six hits on the US version. In the awesome. US version, it's also a lot harder to position yourself. You have to jump every time, as opposed to the Japanese version where, for some reason, you can just hover and you're always high enough. Also, the obvious text difference, but it's not that big. Right. Yeah, text in 100%, I don't know how much time text saves. I know in any percent, it's only like five seconds. 100%, yeah. I'm not sure. But it's not much. And Samulo's dead. Hey, oh, last two gets it. No, I already killed him the second time too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was trying to like a big build movement thing here. Is, okay. So dramatic. A big movement thing here is you always want to jump and shoot or shoot while falling because you don't lose your momentum. If you shoot while you're hovering or walking, your character stops for a split second. Uh, that's that all gargoyles. Uh, that 20 Zam that he picked up is actually going to be needed for a mini game much later, so uh, a lot of the stuff that kind of looks out of the way is definitely required in this category. Star, you want to take Cinema Nip? Yeah, so this boss coming up here is called Griff. He's relatively random, but you can manipulate whether or not he flies all the way up to the top of the screen or tracks you down towards the bottom. So what you do is you hover slightly above his head when he comes down, and then he'll continue to fly into you. If you don't do that, he'll fly way to the top of the screen, and then you have some RNG coming into play where you can do things like throw feathers or just generally right. laugh at you way out of range. That was a pretty good manipulation yeah. right there. I was, yep, I that was, was really happy with that. Fight. And then another thing to know is, um, even though Cinema stood by the statue after he killed to pick up those boss items quickly, because sometimes you're locked out of having input while the item is dropping off the screen, so you want to be right where it's going to land. Yeah, we're. I'm going to try to do that a couple more times with bosses, where I'll try to kill them inside of them so that I pick it up the second he dies. Yeah, there's a few times where we can structure the fight or count it down and get inside the last hit. Sometimes it's a little bit random. But Damn. we'll explain that more when we get there. I missed a scent, Rip. So, so a scent armor. there that Cinema's talking about is if he was a little bit higher off of that jump, he would have been able to grab that second platform a little early and gotten up and saved a little bit of time. So this is the first major RNG boss of the many RNG bosses in the game. <laughs> you can get him into kind of a cycle where you lock him down on the ground if you're lucky, but a lot of times he'll just fly to the top of the screen. Hey, La Hulk. Damn it. How's it going? <laughs> Nobody wouldn't be here. <laughs> Got him. Wow, that wasn't a bad armor. That wasn't like super terrible. Yeah, this hasn't been too bad so far. No long stretches of firing laser shots or anything. I think he only shot one orb that whole time. Yeah. Yeah, right at the end. Shuts out the flaresy. <laughs> 
So you guys want to explain uh, which gargoyle I'm about to use? Yeah, go for it, Rogue. Sure. Um, so in this game, there's a bunch of different forms that you get from bosses called crests. Uh, the first one that you're going to see right here is called ground gargoyle. Uh, the main thing you're going to see right away is that ground gargoyle has a dash, which is significantly faster than normal movement. Uh, another really key piece of ground gargoyle is it has a different attack depending on if you are on the ground or if you're jumping in the air. If you're on the ground, there'll be a ground attack that sort of slides along the ground, which will do two damage compared to the attack when you jump in the air, which will do one. So ideally, we'll want to hit as many things as possible with that ground shot instead of the air shot. This could go bad. I took two damage before I even got into the cave. All right, just need these yep. bats to cooperate. Oop. So yeah, that was an example of the ground shot right there, and uh, you'll probably see the air shot in a little bit. Yeah, this level the has the first, the, the first damage boosts you see occur in this level, where purposefully hit those fire, um, those little fire guys, and then if you if you're going in a certain direction, you'll fall in that direction. But later there will be some damage boosts where you actually have to change direction. That was risky. I'm so surprised I didn't die. Nice. nice. HP. No, I, no idea what time this is, but it was probably close, pretty close to six. There's a full HP pod up here on the left, so as long as you've got one HP, you need G. To Contrary G. to popular belief, one health is not zero. <laughs> that is a fact. We've cast it on a number of occasions, and yeah. <laughs> one it's continues true. to not be zero. Wow, I got four eyeballs immediately. Go get them. So the eyeballs can come up randomly, but getting four goo at once is considered to be perfect. Perfect pattern, basically. Wow. Each eyeball takes three hits. Did you explain how the ground shot does two damage? Yeah, ground shot does two damage. So against these eyes, it's either one ground shot and an air shot, or three air shots. Or any combination there. You don't want him to go back into the goo, because then you have to wait for him to I'm looking for some health drops now. <sighs> Cinema going for the incredibly swag right side uh, eyeball kill. There we go. <sighs> Finish that with one health. <sighs> <laughs> the clutch plays, boys. Oh, there, there we go. There. Oh yeah, that was pretty clutch. Swag off screen pickup. That was close. Hey. Yeah. I got the swag oh, off screen. Pick up hype. So, uh, all you want, all you need to be, is inside the goo to save a fairly significant amount of time. What you should do is you should try to be completely off screen. Yeah, because swag. Literally, the more off screen you are, the more time you save. But after you're in the goo, it's only a matter of frames. So I'm uh, I'm flying to seconds. the top of the screen here because it despawns bats, which is just a lag reduction strat. The lag oh. in this game is quite real, so oh. anything we can do to reduce it is a huge time game. I almost got damage boosted right... Oh no! I died. What? <laughs> Where? I didn't jump high enough on the platforms with the bats, and then I just ate, ate a whole bunch of shit. It wasn't a big death, I died right in that area, so... <laughs> okay, so that wasn't too bad. You were only a couple seconds just, into the room. That was just me being bad. Luckily, when you die, you start right back in the room, so it's not that big of a loss, really. But now yeah, I got full health. It's pretty easy to just so. keep going. There's no lives or anything in this game. That wasn't a big death. No need to get sad. Right. That was always the big redeeming grace when I played this when I was younger. I never really get. There's no such thing as a game over. Only to the shame of dying dozens of times. <laughs> yeah, this game would be hell if there was game over because of how difficult it is. Ah, oh, damn it! Okay, we're we're still good. We're still Gucci. Sick damage boost. Yep. Oh yeah, very unfortunate aerial uh, flame drop there. 
Yep. Well, but even if I get a big one, as long as you have one health getting into this door, you're fine. Next Again. up, he's going to die in the boss room. This is going to despawn the upper canopy and reveal a health pickup that we need to get. Swag jump. I got it, boys. <laughs> that item that he picked up there was called the skull. There's a couple items that we don't use in this speed run, one of which is the skull, and the skull increases your chance of getting health drops. No, money. I think it's money. Money drops? I think yeah, no, skull, is skull is... Oh, yeah, skull crown. Is yeah, you're right. Crown is money. You're right, crown's money. I'm dumb. Yep. Continue. So, he died here. That's on purpose. That despawns the canopy. Uh, all you have to do is enter that room and leave. Um, there's some things you could theoretically do, but the easiest and what the run actually does is you just die, go to the previous room, and since there's no lives or anything, you just... Go grab the pickup. So this is Flame Lord. I'm gonna try to channel my inner Star Surfer for this fight. So basically, what you need to do with Flame Lord is you gotta know how when he's gonna die. He takes 20 hits of damage, two from the ground shot, one from a shot in the air. Wow. So what you want to do is you want to be inside of um, the, the flaming ball when you kill him. And for the same reasons we were talking about before, because he, he drops the item, but then you can't move. So if you're inside him, you get the instant pickup. If you're not, you have to wait for the death animation. That, that loses about seven seconds if you don't. I don't know if I was close enough, but that was a pretty good inside. fight. No, I was a pixel off. Damn it. I should have taken the hit, but I didn't know how much health he had left. You got some pretty good ground shots in there, though. Yeah, I got pretty good cycles. So this is the hardest you're... part in the game, period, if you're learning this. This mini game. I don't know about that. <laughs> that It's a fact. It looks so easy, but it's actually quite... Oh, you're talking about... Okay, for some reason I thought you were referring to Flame Lord when you said that. Yeah, headbutts is pretty tough when you're learning this game. And there's two ways to do this game. You can jump above the skull and headbutt down, or you can try and headbutt on your way up. Headbutting on your way up is faster because you don't trap extra distance to get above the skulls, but it's a little bit harder to time. And those torches you see count down how much time you have left to crack 25 skulls. Essentially, the torches judge you incessantly. Yeah. Yep, they're constantly watching, pointing fingers. Okay, two torch. So that wasn't not terrible. terrible. I could have three torch, but I missed one at the end. The task does it in five torches, and an exceptional human being can do it. AKA it La Hulk. A star has done four. a four torch once. I've got it a few times now. I've but... gotten frames away from a four torch, but I've never actually gotten a four torch. Four torch is insane. I've never gotten a four torch. Well, so these pillars can actually be clipped through a little bit if you get your timing. Just uh, maybe you will see that. Uh, okay. Picks up another jar. Um, those empty jars were actually going to be pushed a little bit to go inside them, but we'll talk about that one. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we don't use in this run. We don't use the scrolls. Um, we don't use two of the talismans, but the jars are actually very important for the speed run, and it's very important that we have a specific number at a specific point, or the route is basically dead. So I can save some time here if I take no damage on Hippogriff, because that means I can skip his health. Not every boss drops an item that you need, so this boss here, it's, you know, the same Hippogriff with a little bit um, different speed and patterns than the other one, um, but he, he just drops a full health, so we don't actually pick it up, but it is important to go to the next um, stage with full health, so if Cinema takes a hit here, he'll likely um, stick around for the health drop. I did not take a hit, so we're good. Nice. Good, good start to the level. You also, that's dependent on whether you take a hit on the boss or if you take a hit coming to the boss. Because then you'll have to pick up the health too. 
Yup. I didn't do either, so that was pretty good. Uh, so this... here... Oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, please, go ahead. So here, we're going to have tornado jumps. Essentially, what you're going to do is it's a very precisely spaced and positioned tornadoes. So you want to jump, clip through the tornado, and then, again, accelerate again so you can get quite a bit more height than you usually, uh, usually can. If you time it well, you can also get more than two shots on screen at a time, but it's very, very, very tight. There's a couple places in this game where you can abuse um, platforms and floors where you kind of clip up into them. And tornadoes are just one place that we do that a couple times. The other time was in the early Flame Lord stage when Cinema jumped over the birds. So, all in all, those pretty good tornadoes. Yeah, those were definitely pretty good tornadoes. So now we got Arma, Green Arma, Arma Verde, the most annoying boss in the game. Also known as the Arma Lottery, Arma 2, and General Pigeon. Or Pidget. No, 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 this one would be Pidgeotto. Oh yeah, I always forget Pidgeotto comes first. Yeah. So you can get a double hit on um, green armor early, but Cinnamon just barely missed it. Yeah, I tried for it. I'll take that hit. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. Please stop shooting energy balls, I just want to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's three in a row. Yeah, I think that shot was worth it since you were at full health. That's what I thought, but you know. If he tornadoes right on the side of the screen, I can't do the strat I usually do. So that was disheartening. If he tornadoes right now. Nope, of course he doesn't. He's gonna wait till he's on the side of the screen again. Okay, not too bad. Oh, I so can do it. All in all the... He's dead. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, all in all, that Arma 2 wasn't, uh, wasn't terrible. Uh, RNG-wise. Um... Not the most ground shots, but again, that's very dependent on whether or not he's low enough and you can lock him into a cycle. And he's definitely a boss that you can die on if he gives you some problems. Oh, definitely. Yeah, he and... can he can swoop at a height where like you can't jump him, but if you stand on the ground, he can still hit you. It's really dumb. He also probably has, and you guys might disagree, but he definitely has the highest variance of RNG for me. Like, I've lost upwards of a minute on that boss, boss just, just because, because he's like, I did not, not do anything. Any any <laughs> this game, game. Please, please. I tried trying to kill but the second killer just, just made, made me lose, lose my, my hover for, for, for some reason. Well, well yeah, yeah, I just saw it. If you run, you run, you fly into a wall. Some walls, I don't know what the reason is. I don't know what it is, I think it has to do with the height on the wall, because I can run into that. Uh, pillar, uh, pillar and keep flying into it and keep my height. I, I'm pretty sure they're programmed slightly differently because they move. That's probably it too. Going like for moving an early pillars hit. tend to have slightly Got different. It. Uh, we in there. So that that early hit, what happens is if you mash, um, I mean you don't have to mash, but if you fire on the frame, you can actually hit the boss before the fight starts. And there are a few places. You can do that in almost every boss, but it only it's only possible to hit a few bosses with it. Yeah, it's very much frame perfect yep. as well. And also very much worth if you can make it happen, but yep. I think most I, of us just mash to try and get it on Yeah, I can never seem to get it. And every time I have gotten it, it's been a wasted shot. <laughs> All right, you guys can explain. Number one, that was a really good flyer fight. <laughs> Um, you guys can explain Griwon, because I want to focus. Uh, you can take Griwon Star. Okay. So this next stage is a killer. Um, basically, Cinema's just going to use Flyer to fly towards the end of the second room. He's going to pick up an item. But the boss is what's tricky. The boss is called Greywon, a.k.a. Dush. And you have to hit him 16 times with Firebrand, the first gargoyle that we were using. 
Um, the fight in itself is basically really easy. You just need to be patient and wait for him to crouch down. You can lock him into a cycle. But if you get a little bit excited or if you try to predict his movement, um, he hits you for three damage, which, you know, when you only have eight health, you can die pretty quick. Yeah, his breath will do two damage to you. His, um, if he runs into you in any shape or form, that's three damage. He can very easily wombo combo you by breathing on you and then jumping into you, and that that's it, that's that's how run dies. Runs die. <laughs> When we were all first learning this new route, basically what would happen is when we would race, everyone would get to this stage, all of a sudden the Discord goes quiet, and then, you know, in 30 second increments you hear people shouting because they had died and had to restart. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you don't actually have to fight this dog first. Um, there is a different route where you kill this dog later on with a much easier gargoyle form. Um, but doing him first saves about 10 seconds on average. There's so many clench moments in this goddamn run. And yeah, that was, yep, that was, that those was were, good. Those were good reads. Those were good reads. That one health, again, <laughs> yeah. say it with me, chat. One not equal to zero. That's the second time I've killed a boss with one health. <laughs> it won't be the last, I guarantee that. So now we're doing Flyer 2. Uh, in the old route, you would do Flyer 2 and Arma again and then come back and do Griwon. But uh, because of the upgrade um, you get from Griwon, Arma again is literally a piece of cake. He dies so quick. What is it? The new... With the demon fire, it's 12 shots. Is it... How many shots is it without demon fire? I think it's like 26. Yeah, it's quite a bit. It's too many, basically, is what it is. So I'm going to go for a damage booster at. Shows out to the Hulk. The world record holder didn't even know. <laughs> he watched my stream and he was like, oh, you wow. can do that? The call-outs. I, I, I added in world record holder. I feel like... That counts for something. <laughs> no, but this damage boost straight here. Um, I figured out. And La Hulk didn't know about it. Right there. Usually you would just kill that bat. But it's faster to do that. It is a pretty nice damage boost too. You can slide up along the wall and it's fairly consistent. <laughs> So now we got Flyer 2. Only difference between this boss is he takes more hits and he does more damage. I'm going to try for early hit again. Alright, wasn't even close. I dropped way too early. So. Yep, you have to be a little bit lower on this flyer. The early hit is definitely more forgiving on the first flyer than it is on the second one. This is also another boss that can uh, can ruin your day. Oh yeah. I believe you take three damage from all shots from the flyer as well. I think his tail does less damage, but if he comes up and gives you a kiss, I think it's three. Yeah, his face does three. I don't remember if, if his sides do three or two. I think his claws do. So there, yeah, three damage hit. That was a pretty good fight. Wasn't too bad. And you want to be fighting him from the ground, because if he flies to the top of the... It gets a lot harder to, to kill him and time the shots. Right. Even though you can fly, it's fairly easy and fairly fast to just get into a jump cycle if you're on the ground and he's flying low. This is the infamous dark room. Nobody likes the dark room. Anyone that tells you they like the dark room is lying. <laughs> Basically, there's platforms all over the place, and a lot of the walls are covered in spikes. So it's not just about to go. You also have to make sure not to run into the spikes on the walls you can't see. But you also need to not get hit by these bats, which they don't 
just damage you, they attach to you, and you have to um, basically mash your D-pad to try and get them off. Um, but Cinnamon had a had a pretty nice dark room there, a little yeah, bit that was, laggy. That was a very that was a very solid dark room. Yeah, yeah. if you don't get hit by a bird, to like the dark room, I don't believe him. <laughs> oh hey, is uh, now a good time to cut in? Yeah, sure. sure. So uh, we have a ten dollar donation from Magic Guy that says Jazzy Punk Bonus Fun Times. Woohoo! Also, let's get this pump prime. Thank you for starting off the donation ten bucks and getting that incentive. Donation hype. Well, maybe, maybe not the hype. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you. So that was a really good fight. Um, there's a trick you could do for that boss, and I couldn't even attempt it because he was on the left side of the room. If he's on the right side of the room, if you wall grab and hit him on the last hit, apparently the wall grab cancels out uh, your character's walking animation when he dies, so you can just pick up the upgrade inside of him. I, I think, think I how it works mechanically well. is the uh, the code basically forces you to hit a d-pad direction until you change an animation and since the animation goes from wall grab to fall it just stops so in the town here is where we're going to be buying potions now it's really important that cinema before he goes into this little shop here that he has at least 32 zam which is the gold in this game 32 is the number that you to get two mercury potions, which is our, which are those blue potions, and two sulfurs, which are those yellow potions. The mercuries, um, their effect is that when you use them, you teleport to the previous stage that you were in. Now it sounds really stupid, but it's actually quite useful when you need to revisit stages to get all the items. The sulfur is, is pretty useful because we can pick up items during those revisits and then exit the level immediately <clears throat> instead of having to travel to the end. The most oh. important piece about the Mercury, though, is the Mercury Cancel, which will be coming up here soon. Um, ideally, if you use the Mercury, you'd still have to, you know, travel through, you'd have to pick up the item. So you'd think you wouldn't be able to use it on boss pickups, but if you use the Mercury at the exact same time that you pick up a boss item, you don't have to fight the boss again, and you go to the previous room, and you get the pickup. Where normally you would have to go to the overworld map and play the level all over again. Right. So you have a couple of frames to pull off this trick. Alright, let's, let's give this a shot. And there's a few different Got strategies. It. Cinema Cinema does the walking strategy. As you, there's a strategy where you jump on it, and a strategy where you above and try to land on it. There's also a strategy where you just sit there and try to time it like a boss. Yeah, you sit uh, where I the upgrade spawns. I used to do spots. that. It's not as consistent. <laughs> it's definitely not good. I got pretty good at it, though. Like, all in all. Not worth doing, though. <laughs> The tough part is that it's, it's really deep into the run, and if you get it early, not only do you have to go back and, um, to the previous room, but you don't have the boss item, so you have to go all the way back and kill the boss again, and then you don't get another shot to use that merc, so then you're back to the overworld and so on and so forth. Yeah, so wastes getting a lot it early of time. wastes a ton of time. It's much better to miss it, which is to say getting it late, um, than getting it early. If you've ever been in one of our streams, you might hear us famous Alan Jackson song whenever we get there. Yeah, every time Star hits it early, he sings Alan Jackson, so I want that to happen if I miss the second one. I'll let you all guess what the song is. Revisiting this room, it's pretty much the same, but it's a lot safer because you have more health. And then we're going to be grabbing a one last pickup, and as Star said earlier, sulfuring out, which is going to take us back to the world map. <laughs> yeah, that's the lore. You got it. Nail on the head. Axe body spray is not the same as a shower demon. Ugh. 
All the water in this game is holy water. I like that. So this revisit is really fun to watch. Um, yeah, really I'm not cool doing it ground. justice. <laughs> there's some really cool ground gargoyle that you can do. <clears throat> I messed that up a bit. No biggie. We should talk quick about what one of the items that Cinema picked up in the previous stage under the water was the hand. Did you talk about the hand? Uh, we haven't talked about the hand yet. Um, so the useful... I'll, I'll, I'll get it. Yep, go um, ahead. So the useful talismans in this game are armor, which Cinema currently has equipped. That cuts the damage you take in half. A hand, which increases the number of shots you can have on screen by one. And... Uh, the fang. The fang we get on the last level, and the fang doubles your damage. Fang doubles your damage, but you also lose the effects of armor, so it could be risky to use. Right, definitely. Armor is definitely one of the safest things to have, but since you wouldn't be doing either double damage or having an extra shot, it's generally slower. I didn't pull a rogue, we're good. So, pulling a rogue... <laughs> Just so the stream knows, is forgetting to equip the sulfur here, so that you have to go back into your menu and equip the sulfur. One other version of pulling a rogue is if you hit sulfur before you pick up the item and have to come all the way back to the level and get it. <laughs> it's called an early sulfur, and early you, just sulfur, gotta, yes. you just gotta learn that it's not a frame perfect trick to hit that sulfur, so calm yourself. <laughs> You can't lose frames, guys. The frames are important. <laughs> no, my personal favorite uh, early sulfur, though, is I accidentally grabbed the right side of the wall instead of falling on top of the sulfur. So I just stared and watched Firebrand clinging to the wall as I disappeared. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. I think I have a clip of it on my page. It all comes down to this guy, boys, if he cooperates with me. So we have Are a... you going to go for any form of manipulation here, Cinema? Yeah, I always do. Um, basically, the manipulation for this guy is um, if he opens his eye and then he shoots something at you, let it be an enemy or rocks falling from the floor. Roof. Fuck. Um, if he shoots rocks from the roof or throws an enemy at you, if you get hit by the enemy, 95% of the time he'll open his eye again. This boss is aptly named Crawler. That's not even a nickname. That's literally the name in the credits for yeah. this boss. Also known as Pizza. Pizza the Hut. Yep. I don't think I have any meme names for this guy yet. Not in my split. That was a pretty least. good fight. This guy is a run killer, though. He can literally walk back and forth across the screen for a minute or more. Yeah. For days. I don't know why I tried days. to drop down. Alright, so now you guys know what happens if you miss it late. Better to miss it late than early, though. That oh, is definitely. Fact. Especially on Crawler. Crawler is the biggest time save and time I told you, loss. the Hulk. It's not perfect RNG. We can manipulate him. <laughs> <laughs> Cinema taking the cowardly way out and switching off of the Mercury so that he can't <laughs> accidentally select it. I've done that in like halfway through this water section. I like I like to refer to that Mercury as the shame Mercury, so you have to display your shame at all times. <laughs> wow, I am just eating damage on this section. Good thing there's a health upgrade up here. If I can even yeah, this, get to it, damn. <laughs> this first section is not that big of a deal, um, but the next section after Cinema picks up the health upgrade, it's really important not to take damage because there's a boss coming up, um, and he will wreck you. Yep. Holothurion basically allows you to hit him, <laughs> and that's there's literally no getting around it. He will. Well, we'll explain it more when we get there while the fight's happening, but essentially he just chooses <laughs> if you can hit him or not. So 
Sinma taking a brief pause there for some reason. I didn't want the fish to hit me, and then he hit me anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget, this game does what it wants. Yeah. Why did I do that? Why did I think that was a good idea? The section is really laggy, so you want to make sure and kill these fishmen as soon as you can. Because the more you have on screen and the more they start um, shooting water at you, the laggier it all gets. Cinemas had some nice shots over the um, the purple spiky platformy thingamajiggers. Um, is that the technical term? Yeah. That's the scientific term, yeah. yeah. <laughs> scientific you know, term. I never thought about it, but it's probably coral. I always thought it was just like sea urchins just stacked up yeah, on top sea, of each sea other. Urchins, coral, that sort of stuff. In, so this is Hollow weird... Thurion. Um, he's going to essentially what Hollow Thurion does is he changes the currents and pushes you either right or left, around, up, down, all sorts of crazy directions. Bring ideally, it around if, town. yeah, ideally if Cinema gets lucky, he'll nope. be able to kill Hollow Thurion in the middle of the shell. But we'll we'll see if he gets lucky. Oh my god. And if you god. noticed, he switched to armor because what can happen is if juggling you above him like this or going back into his shell, you wind up taking a lot of damage. And Let dying to this you. boss is the literal worst because going back through the water takes a lot of time. It takes like a minute and ten seconds or more. Yeah, when you die in this on this boss, you go all the way back to the full water section we just worked through. That was a terrible fight. Early pickup? Maybe. I don't know if I got it. Uh, no, I think you're too far no. to the left. No, I was too I far I think to you got left. it, dude. You're too far to the left? Yeah. yeah. If you can see Firebrand, you're too, you're not in the right spot, guaranteed. And this at this um, death animation skip, if you pick up the item early, is actually quite a big side of the screen it takes a long time to walk in for the pick what is it a five ten second time save if you're inside him yeah probably pretty close to ten i would imagine off of the worst possible position that was pretty sick i've never done that before i can't wait to see what it is <laughs> just to jump over the pot it's not that impressive So this level, if you go fast enough, get the water rising and falling at the perfect time um, where you can basically keep moving without ever having to stop. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, Cinema going for um, the flyover technique. You can either kill those things and hope... You can, e you can either kill those things or hope that they don't shoot up. And he seemed to get I, pretty lucky on I the swear shots. I have a way to manipulate those guys. I'd rather just kill them. <laughs> yeah, I usually just kill them too. There's lots of different strats and ways to do things in this game, which is kind of cool. Every player does, you know, the little moments um, slightly differently. And there's a lot of, even in between the big boss RNG or the good luck, there's a lot of really subtle micro-optimizations that end up adding up over the 45-minute run. Or 40-minute run okay. if you're LaHulk, or 39-something-minute run if you're LaHulk in about a week. <laughs> so this boss is Skula. His head and his body actually take um, damage differently. His head takes two hits from the legendary gargoyle, and his body... I don't even know. how. It's just however many until I kill them, usually. I yeah. think it's twice as many for the body as it is for the head. No, it's not four hits for him. I said twice as many, so... Like, yeah. isn't it... It's two for the head. Well, it's not... I don't know how many it is for the head, but it's... It's two yeah, for I think you're right. For every for one shot on the head, it's two shots on the body. You can actually kill the head and the body at the exact same time, and it saves a little bit of time because their death animations happen. Um, together as opposed to separately when you kill the two pieces of them separately. 
So this is the castle. Uh, it's mostly refights and some pretty easy platforming, save the windy section, which we don't talk about. <laughs> so Except Scar, who somehow manages to get zero damage windy section. So still pretty easy platforming, right? <laughs> Super easy peasy. The wind section is not that difficult. Don't let Rogue No, it's you. not that bad. There's just one spot at the end, which can be kind of annoying. The tower climb after Fang is can be annoying, yeah? Yep. But as far as dying goes, um, once Cinema beat that dog boss, Grey One, dying kind of goes out the window. We talked about, you know, you can die on that snail, um, but usually you're okay. The, ne the next difficult spot where death is possible is going to be the final boss. I despawned the ghost. That was pretty cool. Nice. So for so some this reason, is that's my the most favorite hidden, hidden yeah. health upgrade in the game. That's the most hidden you just health upgrade. the bell and it falls out. Yeah, if you're trying to do like a casual 100% run of this game without knowing where everything is, it's impossible. They they place the item in spots where you would never ever think. That one especially in the bell. Even even the the fang here I was gonna drop down. To. You would never know it's down there, but there it is. That's the talisman that lets you do double damage that we were referring to earlier. It yeah, like there's a slight visual cue for the fact that something's down there, but you have to be looking for it. And on the last section of the game, which casually can be pretty difficult, usually you're not looking for that. So uh, we get to take our revenge on Grewon for being such a jerk earlier. <laughs> because this fight is a piece of cake. Yeah. The the alternate route to killing Greywon first actually does it with this gargoyle, so it's basically just as fast as I was about to do this fight. Um, but again, you lose about 10, 10 seconds. Yeah, it's, it's a bit slower if you... with the normal Greywon because you have Fang at this point, right, so it only takes fang. three shots. But it's equally as easy. Yeah, it is definitely equally as easy. So Cinema's going to walk him um, to the far right of the screen so that he doesn't have to travel distance to the next um, the next room. So this is the final boss. He has well, three phases. Form one of the final boss. Yeah, he has three phases. Phase one. Phase one's easy peasy. This is Phalanx, the guy from the... The intro credits who stole all of our all of our crests. Shoutouts to Crest Fetty. That was pretty bad, phase one. He takes four on this phase or five? I can it's never five. remember. It's five, five yeah. Yeah, pretty unlucky movement on that phase one. Yeah, I was hoping he would I... swoop right at the beginning, that would have been sweet. Yeah, ideally, ideally, you take as little damage as possible in Phase 1 and Phase 2 because you want as much health as possible going into Phalanx 3. It's a pretty rough fight, and the more health you have, the more quick kill cycles that you can do. And there's no way to get health other than dying after you start this boss. And dying generally is not a preferred method of getting more health. Not preferred. Wow, thanks, game. Just ate my hover. Love it. This boss has an interesting iframe phase in the middle of the fight, where his iframes last about five seconds where you can't hit him. When people first start playing this game, it's like, why am I not hitting him? But there's this weird one long iframe. Yeah, you really don't want to to mash on Phalanx. Uh, one Going for the jump in reverse. The jump in reverse. I got the reverse. I didn't get the jump. So there's a in this game and the 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 early shots that we've been talking about. Cinema did on the first flyer. Basically, on the first frame of some scene transitions, you have the capability to do input. So here, like turning to the left. Normally, if you don't input 
um, Firebrand is turned to the right, but you can also do things like jump and catch the edge of this platform. Someone should try to task dying in that room. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so nice... Okay, really nice quick kill start here. Um, you can get in his face and just spam at him. Um, you can actually, if you do it just right and get a little bit lucky on the energy balls, you can basically sit in his face and just kill him um, in like 40 seconds or something like that. Yeah, being able to just sit there and kill him is incredibly precise positioning, though. Usually what we do is we get knocked out. Get ready on time, whoever's on it. Seconds. This won't take long if he does, if he stops with the lightning bolts. Oh my god. Fight so far. No, it's not anymore. Those light, those lightning bolts he shoots, while he does that, he's covering his face so you can't hit him. So you want him to do those blue laser beams as much as possible. The closer you stay to him, the more likely you are to do blue beams. Well, that's at least what I've found. Yeah, I've noticed that too. You want to be fairly level with his teeth to get him to open up with a laser. And what's funny is these platforms can just troll you by pushing you right into the boss. And getting hit by the boss's body or the, the arms up at the top costs you a whopping four health. And usually you only have between, you know, 12 and you're lucky 16 to I just want to punch my fucking computer. Sounds like we may have had a, a health refill. Sounds like the game may have literally cocked me. Well, that is unfortunate. I, c I couldn't be any closer to his head. I, it's random if he shoots lightning bolts. So now that Cinema has more health, he can go those quick kill cycles though. Literally hate this game. This would have been a good time too. And nope, I can't go for quick kill because it ate my jump when I wall grabbed. Oh, this is the worst boss in any game I've ever played. There's a there's one more boss in this game actually called the Dark Demon. Um after you beat the game you get the password. Um and you start with a different, a, a different uh, crest, and you can use a completely different demon, the ultimate demon, which has all of the power-ups from all the other demons combined. In that case you're cool. curious, the main reason why we don't count it in 100% is because you have to beat the game in 100% in order to unlock that form in the first place. So it's more like a new game plus feature. Today is is Dark Demon done in the boss rush category? Yeah. Uh, yes. Dark Demon is the whole purpose of the boss rush category. I believe. Shoutouts to Broidman. That fight started off so good too, which is why I'm so sad. Yeah, it was a pretty good opening. So when he does that blue laser beam, the one thing that's consistent is that he'll always throw up an energy ball at you and then open up and shoot. So if you just wait for the energy ball and shoot it, um, you can basically get the, the free hit on his face. If you time it just right, you can fire a shot later and get two hits on him as you're falling. All right, get ready on time. That's really precise. Time. Yo. Hey. God. Underestimate. It was probably like a 49 or something dumb. 48 something. 48. Oh, no, it's still going. 48.51. Damn. And if you take off the minute and a half I got into that fight before dying, that would have been a pretty decent time. Yeah, you died the first time at about 46.20. Yeah, a little bit rough of an ending there, but thank you so much for the run. Much appreciated. GG, everybody.
Yeah, GG. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get set up for Hotline Miami here. So we're going to put up a uh, break screen in between, but thank you. Yep, so thanks for having us. Yep, thanks See for having us. See you guys later. See you.